okay uh good morning once again this uh this is the continuation of uh, uh the last three or four classes uh, related to chronic uh otitis media uh, as all well, uh, otitis media uh you have uh, previous day faculties uh, the your previous faculties have discussed regarding the uh normal anatomy uh the pathology how the disease progresses how the disease presents and what are the complications are they serious complications are they the less serious or what may be the long term uh, complications regarding that they have discussed and today i'll be discussing about the simple uh, surgical principles for the otitis media uh, otitis media is usually directed to the middle ear the disease of middle ear uh in the normal uh, anatomy and the normal functions of middle ear is to transform the sound from external environment to the inner ear so principally the main problem what the patient faces is the the hearing problem apart from that uh they also faces the uh impending complications if untreated for in the long term so to minimize that uh, uh hearing impairment and to reduce the risk of complications uh we should uh, the ear surgeon usually uh focus on the uh surgical management especially in the ear disease of course we also give a uh, medications for the control of the diseases but most of the cases we today we are discussing after the giving the uh, conservative management that is the medications more uh, if they are not treated by the medical medications we should go for the surgical management so there are many slides a few slides uh, i'll be skipping there for the due to the short uh, time okay these are the common uh, ear surgeries which we do in our day to day life myotomy this is just only the incision given in the tympanic membrane for the drainage of the uh, what you call collection or pus and bromate insertion uh, also known as ventilative insertion that is for the otitis media effusions if the patient has a symptoms or has a hearing impairment myoplasty tympanoplasty and mastoid mastectomy and stapes surgeries uh we'll discuss about the most uh, the simple one and the common one uh this stapes surgery are the complicated one uh, just uh, you should know the term terminology only the the stapedectomy and stapedectomy otomy means in the uh, normally this is done in the uh, condition of otosclerosis which we discussed in the if it has been discussed previously Yeah, the stapedectomy stapedectomy is done is specific for the otosclerosis and this is the simple the uh, highlighted area of this uh, skull this is the temporal bone which is in the lateral part of our uh, skull this uh, for the uh, recapitulation okay this is the temporal bone uh, this is for the right and this is the these are the sub divisions of the temporal bone is commas part mastoid part mastoid process and this is the body part of the inner ear different bed stem mastoid foramen these are the sub division of the temporal bone and this is the when we do in the coronal perceptions this is the uh, 
uh, normal uh, anatomy of the uh, ear, outer ear, middle ear, and inner ear. This is the area which we usually focus for the surgical issues and to bring almost not the normal natural process almost on to the working hearing status and the due to complications. This is the normal eardrum, which you see, this is the uh, one of light, and this is the right and the left. We'll be discussing on the OBD to how to examine the eardrum and how to know what are the normal landmarks just for the uh, knowledge. I mean, and this is, we'll discuss myotomy and the prominent insertions. These are the indications, uh -huh. especially commonly we do with the serous otitis media, also known as otitis media effusions, OME. This is the short form, which is universally accepted short form. Serous otitis media, some, in some cases, acute separated otitis media when the medication fails. And few, in the rare cases, aero otitis media, atelectry, barotrauma, uh, air otitis media means bad trauma. There is a fluid collision in the middle ear, and sometimes, and in uh, some uh, otologic surgeons prefer it in case of atelectric tympanic membrane for the ventilations. This is the procedure. We give an incision almost in the inf anterior inferior quadrant at around the anterior inferior quadrant at around the corner of light, and the tube is inserted easily. Uh, radial incision given. Always otitis media, in, in case of otitis media uh, effusion in bedding system insertion cases, the incision, radial incision given in anterior compartment or the anterior quadrant. Never in the posterior. So, and we prefer to do in the anterior inferior quadrant. So, this is the how the tube is inserted and it is drained. And usually in exam, uh, in case of uh, fiber, the question is usually asked whether the, what is the main reasons for inserting ventilation of insertions. The main, the first one is the for the ventilations and second only, only the drainage. Because during the, after the incisions, we usually drain with the suction tube and uh, almost the fluid are uh, drained out. But for the long period, the tube is inserted for the ventilations. And in the anterior wall of the middle ear cavity, we do have a station tube. So, for that reason, the tube is inserted in the anterior quadrant. So, there is the middle ear ventilation is almost, comes almost on the normal, so the hearing uh, will improve. And these are the inst instruments, just to have a look. And these are the ventilation tubes. And this is the commonly used tube, uh, it's like a dumbbell shape, but there is a hole in the middle of the part. So this one of the part goes to the middle ear and uh, one is in the outer of the uh, external outer candle in the tip end of the membrane. And this holds, the perforation holds this part of the grommet. And this is the different types of ventilative. And these are the complications. There, there may be disclosement, infections, perforations. Usually the ventilation tube are, uh, are excreted after uh, with uh, Usually when the otitis mirrored effusion, there is a collection of fluid. So there is a less movement of tip and membrane. So vibration will decrease. So that will cause the less conduction of sound to the, and the less movement of the ossicles. So there will be, there will be less movement of the uh, foot plate with the uh, oval window. So the sound, the intensity sound will get less. But when we uh, put the bandage tube, tube and the, there is the drainage of the fluid, the 
the air pressures from the estrogen tube to the medial air and the external air almost uh, not uh, normal, but there is a movement of uh, the presence of uh, air in the middle air and the, the mobility of the tibial membrane will increase, so that will cause the sound conductions to the inner air more comfortably, so patients hear better. That's the case. But ultimately, in the long term, there is uh, the tube will be uh, automatically removed from the uh, tibial membrane and it gets out from the air canal. It's removed, so. There is a usually the incision process, but sometimes uh, due to different reasons, there may be get infected, or the, the foreign body may get into the middle ear, or there may be a perforation, which is the unwanted side uh, complications on tibial sclerosis, or there may be uh, tibial membrane will be thinning. These are the unwanted uh, complications of the tibial uh, administrative insertions. So, uh, as previously discussed, there are two types of uh, chronic separated otitis media, which we have discussed. That is the chronic separated otitis media tibia tibia type, uh, nowadays known as a mucosal type. So, for that uh, conditions, uh, we usually prefer myeloplasty if not controlled by medications and not healed by uh, for the long uh, waiting and the patient wants, so we prefer the myeloplasty. In some cases, we do the cortical myxotectomy and the myeloplasty and sometimes tympanoplasty. Uh, for myeloplasty, there is a simple definition. It is only the repair of the perforated tympanic membrane, usually using a graph material. We, we usually, we don't touch the middle ear part of the ear. Only that there is a repair of the perforated tibial membrane. In some books, in test books, in the, some has also written that myeloplasty and the tibial type 1 is almost the same one, but uh, as an autology, this is a, there is simple differentiation is there. In myeloplasty, there is only the repair of perforated tibial membrane. In tibial means tympanum means middle ear. There is a repair of tympanum membrane and we do some procedure in the middle ear that will go for the tympanoplasty type 1. Myeloplasty, only the tympanum membrane, tympanoplasty, repair, myeloplasty plus middle ear uh, procedure will be added there. So this is the simple differentiation. And what, what are the indications or what are the aims and objectives for doing the myoplasty? These are the main uh, the concerns for the surgeons and as well as the patients. The main problem is that the patient has a long history of ear discharge, recurrent ear discharge, intermittent type of ear discharge, especially in the activity many type. The patient gets irritated and always the patient have a problem of uh, water entry and or on the air picking there is air discharge and goes for the medications and it goes uh, gets dry. The patient thinks, okay, I'm already like uh, the problem has gone and it won't have created no problem. But apart from air discharge, the patient also uh, have a hearing loss. The, especially hearing loss. The hearing loss will have a different degree of uh, hearing loss. It may be a mild type or it may be a mis, uh, moderate type or the, the severe type. So, especially for the students, uh, especially for the growing children and the career oriented or the job oriented patients, they feel uh, handicapped after the hearing loss. So, they seek for the medical aspect. What should I do? Even after taking the uh, several medications, I didn't have the proper hearing improvement. So, on examinations, we see a perforation in the middle ear, and we advise for the surgery. That is myoplasty at the basic one. But 
due to, uh, on the due, uh, size of the perversion, we can also have uh, some variation there, will be discussed. But main objectives of doing the myelinoplasty is for the almost uh, recovering the hearing loss and prevent the further infections. If you do have a repeated infections in the middle ear, the ossicles will be eroded eroded and the infection may go to the inner air may cause uh, serious damage to the nerve. So in some cases where the my uh, myeloplasty uh, we see the perforation in the middle ear but the and uh, described as a tubity many but the medical medication does not cause the improvement. So sometimes the surgeons may prefer for the myeloplasty apart from the cortical mastectomy and myeloplasty in the same surgery because the there may be a reservoir of infection in the mastered air cells. So that has also to be um, uh, uh, should be also uh, controlled or uh, that's when they have to be treated for the proper management of the otitis media. So for uh, treatment, uh, con it's continued. So um, if we have uh, some surgeons prefer and some have, uh, uh, will uh, mention a uh, thing about the size of the perforation. If there is a small perforation, chemical cautery with silver nitrate cauterization is also preferred and fat graft. And if the this uh, simple procedure fails, these are done in the OPD basis, in the simple uh, operation. And if they fails, the again to the mangrove plastic and uh, more than two millimeter in diameter directly for the mangrove plastic is advice for the patients. These are the aims. The, uh, this slide is, uh, uh, this, uh, we can shape this one, this uh, slide for the mind plastic. Aims of the mind plastic is the important. So we'll be discussing it repeatedly in the cl other classes also. So the first aim of our, in the mind plastic is to, stop the ear discharge permanently. The second is to improve the hearing. We cannot say to the patient that after the surgery, you, your hearing will be normal as previous. But it can come almost to the normal according to the audiogram done in the preoperative stage. So in some Cases we also do a minor plastic for uh, military personnel or pilots. That uh, sometimes in, when the patients uh, wanted to go for the military or the police or the security personnel, they have a medical examination. When the medical examiner sees a perversion in the timber membrane, they are disqualified. So before going to the uh, army or on a police, uh, usually the patients come for the surgical management. So we advise them for the myeloplasty. And after the myeloplasty is uh, uh, success, the patient can go for the, their career oriented places. And for the surgical process, purposes also, those are the, the swimmers, those go, who go for the scuba diving, they are also advised for the treatment of, if they have a poor person, go for the ear surgery. And in the long term, to prevent the tympanic crisis, these are also written. In some cases, the patient may have the recurrent ear discharge, so they may, might have a vertigo during the infections or when the uh, person heals. There is high chances of tympanic sclerosis and which for more causes the conductive type of hearing loss. So to prevent also 
to prevent that uh, kind of complications, we also advise for tympanic sclerosis. And in the old age, especially in the old age, or some patients who wants to have a hearing aid, but the perforations is there in the tympan membrane, we also advise them for the myeloplasty because uh, if the patient wear a hearing aid with the uh, perforated tympan membrane, there is high chances of recurrent ear discharge. So the patient will again have to go for the medications. So to prevent that, the main problem and uh, when there is an intact tympan membrane, even after the surgery, there is a improvement of hearing uh, status uh, in contrast to the perforations. So we also advise for the patients who go for the hearing aid with a demand perforation for the myeloplasty. Uh, these are the prerequisites. When you go before going to the surgery, the these are the criteria or uh, prerequisites which should be followed strictly. The patients, there should be a center of perforation. So center of perforation means the perforation should be in past tensor. Past tensor part. And we should be continuously dried for at least four to six weeks. If the patient comes with you with a center of perforation and only dried for the two weeks, we don't do, we don't advise for myeloplasty. It should be more than four to six weeks because there may be a, some kind of residual infection in the middle of it, but this has, may not be there, but residual infection may be there. So there may be a high sense of surgical failure. So the more non middle ear mucosa should be normal, which can be seen to, uh, with the help of otoscope and through the perforation, you can see the middle ear mucosa, part of middle mucosa, it should be normal. It shouldn't be congested, it shouldn't be wet, but it, there should not be any discharge problem or any pathology, middle ear pathologies. And intact ossicular chains. And this is, it can be, uh, it can be, uh, be known after doing the audiogram that the ossicular chain might be in the normal conditions because if we, the patients have a uh, hearing loss more than 40 to 45 decibels, we might think that the ossicles pathology has involved the ossicles. So we will uh, uh, discuss with the patient regarding the improvement after the surgery. It might, due to the ossicular chain uh, problem, the hearing loss, uh, hearing Improvement might not be what you have expected. So the patient, before the surgery, it should be discussed with the patients. It can be known after the audiogram. And good cochlear is means the cochlear, uh, cochlear knob should be normal. If you have a uh, hearing loss of more than 60, 80 decibels, a profound hearing loss, even the, the successful surgical issues, the hearing will be improved. So. Beforehand, we should tell the pet patients. Patent stitching tube means uh, there won't be any uh, infections. And it is hard to uh, uh, do the test regarding the stitching tube. And this, there shouldn't be any infection in the nose or any operational infections. You should be postponed if the patient comes to you during the admission and you see the, the patient is uh, if have a operation infections, just postpone that cases. The complications, graft rejections are, uh, the graft rejection is the main problem. Uh, Sensioneering hearing loss, very rare. And dislocation of ossicles, very rare. So, the most issues comes for the uh, graft rejections, maybe due to the 
infection, post op infection. It may be to the, uh, it may be from the patient part or it may be with the operated infections, some of that. There are during the myeloplasty, there are some terminology which you come uh, along, like approach and if you discuss about, uh, if you, someone asks you about what are the approaches means, what are the ways that you enter in the, the middle ear? So we have a uh, three types of uh, approach like perinatal, post auricular, and enter incision or approach. What are the, um, the different methods that you enter in the, the middle ear? Perinatal means we have a uh, ear canal. We can do uh, sometimes it, can, it is also known as trans cannon. We don't do anything apart from the uh, flap uh, elevations. We directly perform surgery through the ear canal. Sometimes, due to uh, different reasons, which is also the most popular one, we do a post auricular incision. We'll uh, discuss in the uh, give a picture in the later slides and endoral incisions. That is the incision as well as the approach. And sometimes in other questions, maybe at the technique, that the technique is for the graft, the placement of the graft. And then local anesthesia, general anesthesia, in the both conditions, we can do a surgery. And the graft approach is the different one for the incision and grafting technique is for the, the placement of graft. This uh, audiogram is most, and the patient's air canal should be dry. And these are the instrument and this. Uh, there are, we, traditionally we use the microscope. This is the microscope we use for the microplasty. And nowadays, the endoscopic, due to the endoscopic evolutions, endoscopic ear surgery is, is getting popular. In our institute, we do in the both ways, in the microscopic as well as endoscopic. Due to the uh, advancement of endoscopy, the usually give uh, the almost, there is no scar outer scar so that the patient may benefit from the that one. Usually we do the through the transcanal method or the parameter method. And these are the instruments. What are the advantages of uh, from the microscopic and the endoscopic? The micro microscopic, after the setting with the microscope, we can use the both hand. But in case of endoscopic, one hand should be will be holding the endoscope and other instrument, other hand will be, only the single hand will be there for the surgery. So initially it might be difficult for the surgeon, but for the patient and with the name technology and the popularization and more and more surgeons, the new surgeons and the more institute are going for the endoscopic mangroplasty. This is the approach. Endometrial, also known as Rosen's incision. The incision given in the, this is the part, this is the tragus, and this is the helix. In between, there is a uh, cartilage free area. We give an incision there. This is the endometrial. Uh, no, sorry. This endometrial means this is the through the air canal. And anoral means. Incision given in the incisor terminal is above the tragus and the below the root of helix. There is a cartilage free area. So that will give an incision there and do the surgery. And the post oral, behind the post oral group of almost 1, 0.5 to 1 centimeter behind the post oral uh, group, we give a Incisions parallelly from root of the helix to the master tube, also known as the wilds incisions. These are the three incisions. We give for the local, local anesthesia. 
is the two percent silicon with adrenaline for the reducing the bleeding for in the adrenaline part. And the technique, the underlay technique and overlay. Underlay technique, we usually use. These are the for that going for the. These are the graft. So we go for the graft. Okay, this. What we put or what we insert the in the for the closure of the tibia membrane. Traditionally, universally, and for the many many years, we have been doing temporary fascia. The temporary there is a temporary muscles above the ear in the temporal area of the head. So that muscle is covered with a fascia, the fan shaped fascia or muscles, and covered with a fascia. That fascia area is very much near to the ear. So in the same incisions, we can remove our fascia graft from that area. So it has also advantage regarding the from the other part. Nowadays, the cartilage and the pericardium is very much in popular, popularized in all over the world. Tagal, tagal cartilage, concal pericardium, tagal concal cartilage. And previously, the many surgeons have done for gone for the peristium, fat, vein, fascia lata, dura mater in the in the long runs of the surgical history. But temporal fascia, tagal, and conic pericardial fascia are the easily autographed, so they are easily available and it has a good result, so they are still popular and we are still going for the, this kind of graft. So the graft, these are all the autograft. Means the, the patients, the graft are taken from the patients from the different side of the same patients. So there is less chance of rejections. So these graft are kept in the two techniques, especially in the two techniques. That is underlay and the overlay. Overlay was very popular in the previous, but it's not, they're almost obsolete nowadays. For you all to know that overlay is not done commonly. We only do the underlay technique. Means, underlay means the graft is put under the remaining part of the tibia membrane and the handle of malleus. So that is the underlay technique. Overlay, it was used previously with the where the graft was spread on the over the tibial membrane. Due to the uh, different uh, complications, it is almost uh, obsolete and most of the majority of the surgeons don't do this kind of procedure technique for the microplastic, only the underlay technique. So this is the underlay technique for the for the uh, knowledge. This is so after the uh, uh, microplasty, the patient may go on the same day, or it may the patient go for the next day. If then it's there, we usually keep for the more than twenty four hours. The bandage is there, and the patient are advised. Okay, let's continue. Usually, after the microplasty, usually we advise patient to avoid the water entry in the surgical area, that is, at or around the ear. Uh, we usually keep a bandage to cover that wound area and avoid the nose blowing to take the medication regularly and come for the visit. There, there might be, a, uh, there might to remove the suture and to remove the air pack kept in the air canal. And to obtain an audiogram after the three to six months. 
to uh, to uh, to obtain the hearing whether there is improvement of hearing or not during that we examine for the graft of techniques the graft is well placed and there is no the so after performing a surgery if we do for the, go for the local anesthesia the patient may be discharged after keeping uh, in the post operative area for almost 4 to 5 hours is no pain and patient take care it uh, takes orally normally that patient can be discharged discharged for home but in case of general anesthesia the patients are kept for almost for 24 to 48 hours and iv antibiotics or oral antibiotics should be continued and if patient gets better can be discharged in case of myoplasty this is not the big as uh, major surgery but after the general anesthesia for the precautions we usually advise admit and keep up post operatively after almost 2 to 3 days and on the time of discharge the patients are counseled regarding the uh, prevent for the water entry in the surgical area to take the medication regularly avoid the nose blowing uh, and come for the regular follow up especially we usually advise them to come up the sixth post up to remove the air pack to remove the uh, suture material from the wound and to lo- almost look for the any problem regarding in the wound area or the air canal and or advise almost 2 to 4 weeks whether the graft has healed or not or the graft has taken up or not and after 3 months to 6 months we advise them for to go on a audiogram to compare with the pre operative audiogram whether the hearing has improved or not that's the case and in some textbooks or uh, in um, institute or uh, some surgeons advise the patients not to go for the air air flight a flight after this surgery because, uh, because of the air pressure in the high altitude they the tip amendment one get uh, properly or it may be displaced so the healing will be impaired or there may be a failure so we usually discuss not to go for the flight almost uh 3 to 4 weeks or almost 6 weeks uh, we don't discuss on the overlet uh, we don't do overlay so just for the knowledge overlay techniques is also uh, is present there but uh, due to the uh, more complications than the underlay and the more filler usually is not Uh, not done nowadays but during the long history it was very popular many years back so we need the aims and objectives indications and in some there there is some indication uh, conda indications for the myoplasty not all the cases are taken for the surgery <clears throat> for your knowledge you can uh, sort divide into absolute contraindication or relative contraindication indications but i think it would be better for is the indications on the indications on the before seven years we usually don't advise for the myoplasty surgery this kind of surgery because 
this is the predicting age and their estrogen tip are not well developed and there is high chances of recurrent upper respiratory tract infections in the children. So that are the main problem for the failure of the, the surgery. So after seven years, in some uh, selected cases, but after 17 years, it will be a good age for the myoplasty after 17 years. In some cases, after in, the, in between the seven to 17 years, the patient has hearing impairment, the language development is dif uh, difficult, uh, the patient's uh, school performance is, has gone down due to the hearing problem. We might take that case for the myoplasty, but ideally, after 17 years is the ideal age. And active <coughs> stage is always contraindicated. Uh, regarding the only hearing ear, uh, for example, if the patient has almost a uh, dead ear in the left ear and the patient has central four percent in the right ear, the patient wants to go for the surgery so that the patient might have some kind of improvement in the hearing. But there is, uh, the, there is a uh, ethical issue may come. Comes for the only hearing ear, we usually don't advise for them to go for the surgery. For canal down, radical mastectomy, modified radical mastectomy, aticotomy, atico antrotomy can be done. Just listen to the uh, terminology for you. It may be hard for um, right now, but we will continue to discuss about these cases, uh, terminology, and this classification through the slide. So this is the normal tympan membrane, uh, sorry, normal temporal bone. And this mark area is known as Macron's triangle or supraminter triangle. This, this area is for the target for the master surgery for atic and disease. This is the posterior bony canal one. If you break this one, it, it, the surgery is known as canal wall down mastered surgery. If this is intact, then it is canal wall up. So when we enter after this is the macro triangle, this is the supra temporal line, and this is the posterior bony wall is, and this is the tangent line. And this three line will make a macro triangle. When we about one almost one to 1.5 centimeter below that, we can get antrum. We enter antrum. Antrum is known as the largest air cells in the master L system. Master L system has a multiple air cells, pocket of air cells. Apart from within that, the largest one is known as antrum. So to enter that antrum from the uh, external part, we go take a macro triangle as a landmark. So drill through this uh, bony area and almost one to 1.5 centimeter, we enter to that antrum area. So from the external to internal approach, we do in this kind of surgery. This is the important landmark. Macro triangle or 
supraminter triangle and the boundary is important and the 1.5 centimeter entry in the that is the antrum antrum is the largest air cells among the master l system and this is the bony canal wall and to remove or not the master surgery classified classification is taken in that consideration oh. so in case of canal wall of or the simple mastectomy the simple we, the bony canal is intact there but we have removed the all the diseased air cells from the master air system after surgery it might look like that this is the uh, it is done in the uh, isolated bone this is how it looks it might look like this is the master tip and the, this is the dural part means there is a dural plate and above them there is a brain area and this is the sinus plate area if we break through that we get through the sinus area means la the last vein may come into the account so in case of canal water this is the canal order air canal is intact but in the next slide the area has been widened and we don't see bony wall the bony canal wall has broken down to this level bakara ekdam floor sama puraya cha so this is the example of canal wall down it might be a MRM or the modified radial mastectomy or radial mastectomy, the both it can be your both, and there is some procedure. Have you? They have done something that can done in the middle layer. So for simple simple mastectomy, also known as cortical mastectomy. Also known as Swartz operations, it has a three name: simple Swartz operation and cortical mastectomy. Not be confused with that. Uh, the terminology is three terms are accepted. Indications in case of mastectomies, in case of acute mastectomies, not responsive to the medications. But even if there is no disease in the mastectomy. For other surgery taken as an approach, in case of facial nerve decompressions, cochlear implant surgery, combined approach triple vasty, this simple mastectomy is done as a part of that surgery, and from that the further surgery procedures are completed. For directly for the disease part, acute mastectomy is with. Failure of concept management is the main surgery. Is the main cause for the simple mastectomy. For uh, if you if the examiner asked, you should mention apart from the mastectomies, facial nerve decompressions and cochlear implant implant surgery is the. You should not miss that one. What is done or what is the aim of doing the simple mastectomy? The main aim is to eradicate the disease from the master air cells, also known as the extensurization of all master air cells, and to preserve fairing. Means we don't do anything in the middle layer. Whatever the status in the middle layer, we assume that middle layer is normal. We only deal with the master air cell systems. The incision is always posterior. Due to the long surgery, general anesthesia is done. Usually, we commonly do for the acute mastectomies, follow for medical conservative management. So, please remember that in case of cortical or simple mastectomy, we don't do any. We don't care about the whether 
no, not is it is working or not. Remove all the digits. Make the patient safe. There won't be any complications. But what about the modified behavior? Why? Uh, what are the things that has been modified from the radical? Means there is a eradications and disease removal is there. Make to make the air dry, safe, and to preserve hearing. Means these two the procedure or the steps to preserve the hearing has been considered in case of modified radical mastectomy. So this is the difference between the modified radical mastectomy and radical. Radical one discuss about the hearing. In case of modified radical mastectomy, we can there is some chance of hearing features is there. So if there is adequate cochlear reserve means there is adequate hearing function, uh, hearing is there, the patient can go for the modified radical mastectomy. So what are the steps or principles we to do in the MRM? This is removed as a whole as a master on the cholesterolma grand tissue and cavity, the master cavity. Bony wall is lower, cholesterol disease, grand tissue, all are removed from the middle cavity. But we preserve the healthy mucosa lining of the middle cavity. We don't remove all the tissue or the mucosa from the middle. Only the disease part are removed. Healthy are kept apart. 